Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. I want to begin by acknowledging that we've just spent a long summer as Conservatives debating fellow Conservatives about what comes next for our party and province. It was a necessary and valuable process, a process that made our party stronger, a process that made our province stronger. And I think I speak for many here today when I say I'm glad that process is over. <laughs> I didn't get into politics to spend my summers arguing with Brian. <laughs> I got involved in politics to champion the conservative values that I deeply believe in and to turn those conservative ideas and values into real action. Absolutely. But folks, Travis, the whole leadership, the race was a great experience. It was great to make some new friends and the days and nights in community halls and church basements, working with so many old friends and meeting so many new ones, making some great friendships, and many of those friends are here today. All of the leadership candidates brought out the best in one another. Now, it's true we didn't always agree on everything, as you may have noticed, but every single person on that stage with us, you, Travis, me, Rebecca, Todd, Rajan, Leela, and of course, our Premier. Every single person on that stage, as diverse and as different as we all are, we all ran for the leadership because each of us, every one of us, all of you here today love Alberta. And we all wanted to fight for Alberta, for Albertans. We all agreed on one thing, that Alberta cannot afford Rachel Notley and her gang of socialists and ideologues who want to take us back to the past. Well said, Brian. Well said. The race this summer was an important part of the democratic process, and I'm proud of the vigorous debate we had over policy and leadership. Today, the United Conservative Party is stronger for that leadership contest, stronger for the ideas that were debated, stronger for the engagement with tens of thousands of Albertans. And now it's time to turn the page. Our caucus, like our party, is coming together to prepare for an even bigger fight ahead. It's time to look to the future. We just held a three-day caucus retreat, and I can tell you that as a team, we're energized. We're unified and we're proud to represent our party and all Albertans in the exciting days ahead. Absolutely. As I said, we're all here for a reason, because we care about Alberta, because we love Alberta, because we want to build a better, stronger Alberta. And we're prepared for, to fight for Alberta against anybody who would hold us back, that would hold us down. Now is the time for us all to rally behind our province, to rally behind our party, and to rally behind our new leader, Premier Daniel Smith. My friends, I am so proud to stand here today next to my friend Travis and to stand behind our Premier because the real fight starts right now. I encourage every single Albertan Conservative and every Albertan who cares about freedom and responsibility and fair treatment for all to stand with us because we know who the real opponent is. We know how they operate. We know how they lie. We know they do not play fair. Only by working together can we fight back. Only by staying united remaining strong, will we win? As members of the United Conservative Party, we're fiercely committed to the ideals of fiscal responsibility, a commitment to a market-based economy, and the foundational principle 
of individual freedom, liberty, and limited government. We're proud to always, without apology, put the interests of Alberta and Albertans first. I know it, Brian. You know it. Everyone here knows it. The NDP won't do it. They can't do it. Alberta is counting on us. But we have a lot of work ahead of us. We have the ideas, we have the resolve, and we have a team and a leader to get the job done. Please join us in welcoming to the stage our Premier, Danielle Smith. policy discussions last night. <laughs> Thank you to Travis and Brian for that very kind introduction. I'll have more to say about them in just a, a minute. But good afternoon, my friends. It's great to see you all here at the River Cree the res Resort and Casino. It's a wonderful facility and it actually makes me feel a little bit nostalgic for one of my political heroes, Ralph Klein. I think Ralph would have really enjoyed the idea of holding the AGM here, don't you think? <laughs> I've been thinking about Ralph quite a bit in these last weeks. He was a regular guy, just a regular guy next door with a heart of gold who could get along and chat with basically anyone about anything. I'm also struck by the way that former MLAs and ministers in his caucus talk about him to this day. Because Ralph never ruled over his caucus with an iron fist. He believed in empowering MLAs and ministers and he also believed that MLAs and ministers shared the face of the party, like Jim Dinning and Stockwell Day and Shirley McClellan and Gary Marr, Pat Nelson, Steve West, the list goes on and on. And these great Klein ministers and Albertans are still remembered today. You see, Ralph understood that no one can govern a province as diverse as Alberta without an exceptional team behind them. And I'm doing my very best to learn from that example. So I wanted to share with you what our team has been doing these last 10 days while the NDP and many of the media have been unloading on us without ceasing. While that storm has been raging outside, our caucus has been building the foundation for a UCP government that Ralph Klein would be proud of. So if the person sitting beside you is looking a little weary or blurry-eyed today, he or she may, might be one of your MLAs or one of my staff because we have been working with just a few hours of sleep and a ton of coffee and in the case of Marshall just a few darts over the last 10 days. Most of, of these transitions take two months and I asked our caucus to do it in two weeks. I started by spending significant one-on-one -on -one time with every member of our caucus individually and in fact in the space of six days I was able to meet with 59 of our UCP MLIs for about 30 to 45 minutes each time. Um, <laughs> And that's why I can say that the quality and skill set and education and commitment of these men and women is exceptional and beyond any team the NDP could ever dream of putting forward as a prospective government. And I know at the end of the day Albertans will recognize that when they go to the polls in 2023. Yesterday, from amongst our amazing caucus members, I announced a cabinet. And let me tell you, those were very hard choices because there were so many good candidates to choose from. But I believe we got it right. And further, we have instituted a policy process where every single MLA, minister or not, is going to be meaningfully involved in creating and developing government policy. Every Every MLA must be empowered to effectively represent the constituents they serve, regardless of their title. That's how Ralph ran things, and that's how I'm going to run things. And as for our cabinet, we have the strong and steady fiscal leadership of our finance minister, Travis Taves.
as you can see, Travis has been a pillar of unity since the end of the leadership race, and I feel so blessed to have him on our team. Thank you so much, Travis. And our jobs economy and Northern Development Minister, Brian Jean, is totally committed to the unity of our caucus, to growing our economy, and to making our Northern communities, ensuring that they have the resources they need to keep up with that growth. Thank you so much, Brian. And of course, there's Todd Lowen, Alberta's new Minister of Forestry, Parks and Tourism. And Rebecca Schultz, our Minister of Municipal Affairs. And Rajan Sani, our Minister of Trade, Immigration and Multiculturalism. hear it also from my two deputy premiers, Minister Casey Madu and Minister Nathan Newdorf, who I've asked to be my eyes and ears in northern and southern Alberta to listen and report back on what Albertans are saying and what we can do better to serve them. Thank you, Minister Madu and Minister Newdorf. Now, I could go on bragging about all of our cabinet members and, and our caucus members, but I'm not going to do that right now. But I do want to make special mention of Jackie Armstrong Hominick. She is one of our fantastic parliamentary secretaries, and she's tasked with a very specific mandate. I've asked her to take charge of the Ukrainian refugee resettlement file. And I want to ask you to please help assist our new Ukrainian Albertans fleeing the terrible invasion of Ukraine by Russia. We must help each of these new Albertans and their families find a place to stay and community and friends to call their own. Jackie will help us by making several announcements on what our government is doing to help with this initiative in the coming days and weeks. Thank you so much, Jackie, for stepping up with us. Let's give our new cabinet ministers, parliamentary secretaries, and our entire U U uh, UCP caucus a warm round of applause for they are going to serve Albertans and they are going to serve them well. What a team. We also had an opportunity earlier this week to attend a caucus retreat to discuss the priorities and policies Albertans want us to focus on in the coming months and to socialize and get to know each other a little bit better. We even took an opportunity to play some paintball. And I can tell you, I will remember that experience for the rest of my life, as will Nate Horner when he tried to sneak up on me. He will know not to do that again. And I'll specifically remember the purple welts that I have for at least the next couple of weeks. But that retreat was an amazingly powerful and needed team building opportunity. And let me tell you, we have all been a little bit quiet for these past 10 days, regrouping and bringing this team together. But let me assure you, we will not be quiet for much longer. Our team is now unified. Our team is now ready to fight for Albertans. And come hell or high water, we are going to beat the NDP in 2023. I said we spent most of the days at the retreat talking about Albertans' priorities, and there are four major themes that emerged out of that discussion. One, affordability and the inflation crisis created by the NDP Liberal Coalition in Ottawa. Number two, jobs and economy during this time of global economic uncertainty. Number three, improving health care on an expedited basis. And number four, standing up to the NDP Liberal Coalition government in Ottawa and defending Alberta's interests. So I'm going to speak to each of these priorities and give you a good idea of where we're headed on each of them. So first off, the NDP Liberal inflation and affordability crisis. Let there be no doubt, this crisis lands primarily at the feet of the Trudeau-Singh Coalition government in Ottawa. Justin Trudeau has taken on more federal debt during his time in office than all previous prime ministers combined. And of course, there are the continuous stream of anti-energy policies and carbon taxes that Rachel Notley, Jagmeet Singh, and Justin Trudeau are so fond of. The results of the above fiscal insanity and economic sanctions are predictable. Whether it's fuel, electricity, groceries, or fertilizer for our farmers, the cost of everything we need to live and to raise our families is soared. As a government, we can't solve this inflation crisis on our own. 
but we can certainly keep our books balanced and we can ensure that Albertans and their families are better able to manage through this storm. So over the coming weeks and months, you'll see our government take decisive action in this regard to ensure that families are not obliged to choose between power for their homes in winter or the nutritional food for their families. We will lower the cost of electricity. the financial burden for seniors and vulnerable Albertans, our government will ensure that they have more in their wallets right away to meet the rising cost of life's necessities. To restore affordability to daily life during a time when budgets are being stretched beyond limits, our government will look to removing the provincial fuel tax and ensure that gas stations lower their prices appropriately when we do. And friends, Albertans are the owners of this massive energy resource. It's time to ensure that each of you benefit from that ownership. Affordability is the primary challenge facing Albertans today, and we'll make sure that every decision we make from now on until this crisis is over addresses this for Albertans. Now, number two. Our caucus is also laser-focused on increasing jobs and strengthening the economy. This has been perhaps the greatest strength of our UCP government over these last three years, after the train wreck of an economy handed to them by Rachel Notley. But we have more to do. We will immediately index and lower your taxes so that families will not have to choose between their rent and food. We'll also look at lowering taxes for our ag producers, innovators, and entrepreneurs because it attracts businesses from around the world. And whether it's agriculture or forestry or technology or tourism or energy, whether the businesses we are attracting are small or medium or large, we need to diversify our economy and promote more jobs and prosperity for all Albertans. And we will fight the NDP Liberal Coalition's 300% increase to the consumer carbon tax. 300%, my friends, during an inflation crisis. Have these folks lost their minds? Yes. You thought that was a rhetorical question. Yes, yes they have. A 300% increase in carbon tax will cost Alberta families almost $1,000 per year net of all rebates. And that's just the tax itself. Not to mention the accelerated inflation it will cause. And my friends, incredibly, Rachel Notley is on the record that she supports this carbon tax increase 100%. That's what she thinks is good for Alberta families. Well, I don't. Albertans can't afford these woke, incompetent NDP policies, whether in Ottawa or in Edmonton. So Rachel Notley can stand up for Jugmeet Singh all she wants. I'm going to stand up for Albertans. Thank you very much. Now on to health care, another priority identified and discussed at our caucus retreat. Our MLAs are deeply concerned about health care, as are all Albertans, and rightly so. And here's the problem. We have amazing frontline staff. Our nurses, our doctors, our paramedics. But we have far too many managers and consultants, and not enough frontline staff. That simply must change, and we can't wait any longer. We also have a crisis in emergency medical services. People wait too long for emergency room treatment. The system, my friends, is broken. Most of those managing AHS today are holdovers from the NDP years. They have had their chance to fix this bloated system, and they have largely failed on almost all accounts. Failure is no longer an option. So working with Minister Jason Copping and without disrupting frontline services, we will make the substantive changes that need to be made without delay. We will ensure that all areas of the province have prompt, efficient ambulance service. To address emergency room lineups will improve the triage on the front end while ensuring that those in need of additional care but not in need of a hospital bed are moved to more appropriate facilities and supported there. We can and we must act and there will be announcements on this very soon.
Finally, the Ottawa problem. There can be no doubt that the current NDP Liberal Alliance is just the latest in a long line of Ottawa governments that have frustrated the legitimate aspirations of hardworking Albertans. That stops now. When Ottawa announces policies and laws that attack our economy or violate the rights of our people, or when Ottawa seeks to take control of our sovereign areas of provincial jurisdiction, our UCP government will not enforce those laws and policies in this province, period. very clear. I will never, ever apologize for standing up for the people of Alberta and the province that I serve. <laughs> so, we will pass the Sovereignty Act. Work has already begun on crafting it. We worked on it earlier this week at the caucus retreat. We still have further work to do, but I've asked for it to be ready by the time I take my seat in the legislature. We will then introduce it, and we will pass it, and we will use it to push Ottawa back into its own lane every single time that they step out of line and intrude on our constitutional rights. Alberta will no longer ask permission from Ottawa to be prosperous and free. Those days are done. And my friends, I did not campaign by saying things to win your favor and your votes, only to change the channel on you later. We will get this done. But I also want to make it clear that our caucus is completely committed to building a strong and united Canada. But we shall not do that from a, pos a posture of weakness. We shall do that from a position of strength. Rachel Notley fearmongers, of course. She says doing this is akin to separation. But she and others who are saying this are not telling you the truth. What she is really doing is covering for her own failure as a premier. She had four years to show us that she would stand up for Alberta. Remember how she brought in the carbon tax to get social license? That's what they called it. And what did she get? Nothing. So when Ottawa attacks our energy workers again, or won't budge on equalization, when they triple the carbon tax, when they landlock our resources and confiscate legal firearms, what do you think she will do? She'll do what she has always done. Absolutely nothing. She and her federal leader, Jagmeet Singh, would happily stand by and watch as their good friend, Justin Trudeau, launches economic attack after attack after attack on this province. Well, our UCP caucus team and I will not let that happen. My friends, never before has an NDP or Liberal Party won an election in modern Alberta history when Conservatives are united. Over the next seven months, our Conservative family, we're, we will pour ourselves into ensuring that we beat the NDP in 2023. And we are going to need every single one of you to help us. We must knock on doors, talk to our friends, volunteer, donate, and give our time and talent for this cause, because this is Alberta. We love this province and all it stands for. We won't sit by and allow socialist NDP policies to destroy what Albertans have worked so tirelessly to build. Our Alberta is one of the most prosperous places on earth, one of the great bastions of freedom and liberty 
anywhere, where people come from all over Canada and all over the world to build their dreams. This province is worth fighting for, no matter what the media or the woke Twitter mob throw at us. If we stay united, if we stay true to the strength and values of Manning and Lougheed and Klein, we will inevitably prevail. So join with me. Let's get to work. Let's show Albertans what we've got. Let's beat the NDP resoundingly in 2023. And let's make sure Alberta always remains strong and free.